Hey guys, what is up? Dave here coming back to you with a brand new video on the channel and today's video is about a new game based on Unity 3D. And as you can see in front of me, I have it installed. Um, many of you might not know this game. A lot of you may actually know this game. Um, it first started out as a game with, I believe, Nexon uh, called Crossfire. And it was a game based on the Lithtech Jupiter game engine for PC for people to uh, basically play. It was the Combat Arms before Combat Arms. I'm pretty sure Sudden Attack is the longest running first person shooter based on Lithtech Jupiter, but I might be wrong. Crossfire is like the second or the third. Um, and what I discovered was there is a location locked beta for a game called Crossfire Zero which is an upgraded version, updated version of Crossfire on, or created in, you guessed it, Unity 3D by looking at the files here. So what I wanted to do today was explore these files using things like Asset Studio, um, DN Spy, and even show off a custom tool I've already created for this game's server. So first of all, You'll notice I have Charles open here. And the point of me having Charles open is because I realize that the games download via HTTP. They don't even have SSL encryption. The files just straight download by HTTP. And they also download just like in straight folders like this. And the files are numbered.gz. GZ is just another WinRAR archive file format. You can open them up with 7-zip, you can open them up with WinRAR, you can open them up with a lot of different things. So I took this download SKU method here, and as you can see by this folder, I created an auto-downloader that downloads every single file on the server. And the downloader looks like that. It's very poorly coded. Um, I'm not proud of how I coded it because it's a visual basic coding method in C sharp when I probably could have used like a while loop or a for loop, but neither of those seem to work. So I did a do try loop. Um, and I'll show you the code right now because it's nothing that's going to give anything away. Um, downloader, this code ended up useless, but as you can see, there is a minimum number or a folder number, minimum number and maximum number. And all it does is simply loop through the number as you see here, it loops through the number and just downloads the file as it exists. If it doesn't exist, it skips the file completely. But some of these files are gigantic. So like I'm guessing this is a full map. This is a map, uh, part of the map. That's some resource files. I don't know how it actually installs because all of this stuff is just a single file inside of here. There's no folder structure. And the way the game looks once it's installed is like this. So I'm guessing the game launcher, this thing, um, basically creates the... Oh, that makes noise. I didn't notice. Um basically creates the folder directory. So it's like a smarter installer that puts the files there for you. But as you can see, there's the bundles here of all the Unity 3D stuff. Characters are here, the effects are all here, the scenes are here, so these are gonna be the maps. Sounds, all the weapons, there's not many. All the player view weapons, so they kinda keep the same thought on them. Here's some combined data some service config stuff. This is simple base 64. Give me one second. So it didn't translate back to anything, but I'm sure something we'll get to here in a minute will give me the ability to decrypt this. There's other stuff in here too. All of it's gonna be this encryption. I'm sure we can decrypt these files and we'll actually probably be able, ooh. I wonder if we can change things like the server it points at and then launch the game with commands. Oh, this might be an easy private server. 
ooh, this is going to get interesting. And then there's the mono stuff, of course, for the DLLs. The EXE, the crash handler, and, of course, your favorite sections. There's the screen selection. Pretty cool. The boot config, streaming assets. Which, interesting stuff. Your general resources, your plugins. So this is using Chrome for a web browser in the game, ZF Game Browser. What happens if we run just this? Nothing. And then, of course, our favorite section, the DLLs. And I've already opened them up. Straight editable code. This can be decompiled. This game could be completely, with enough time given, this game could be completely rebuilt from the ground up in Unity 3D with methods of using Unity Asset Explorer and stuff like that. But I haven't yet really gone through to see what's truly possible with modifying this. I do know people already have done ESP. Um, I don't remember where I saw it. People have already done ESP. I want to say it was on unknown sheets. Maybe it wasn't. No, it wasn't. But I have seen people already create hacks very easily and show off that it was easy to bypass the anti-cheat that's on the game. So I'm not surprised by that at all. I'll be straight up honest with you. And honestly, if it's going to be that easy... Why not do it myself? So I got a really nice guy on my Discord server, OctaWolf. He has his, he has a small modding forum. Actually, I'm not sure how small it is at this point. But uh, he has a modding forum that I post some of my stuff on. And I've been meaning to add a link into my videos for his forum. Oh, he changed how it looks. I like it. Oh, everything got deleted. Wait, did it? I think everything got deleted. Yeah, it looks like he reset everything, but that's okay. But it's a place that we could definitely put some of this kind of stuff when it comes to hacking this game. So, let's go through the DLLs. Shoot bullet. Very easy. <laughs> you want to shoot a bullet? Shoot bullet. It's stupid simple. I want to figure out battleground to client. So, I want to find the actual connections here. And one thing I'm going to do, actually, is close all this stuff that has nothing to do with the game. There we go. And we'll do strings. Web image pathfinding. Huh, help URL. So it is going to show up in a lot of different places because of that. That is both a blessing and a curse. Let's see. Let me pause this and see if I find what I'm looking for, and then I'll come back. 
So what I was looking for was the decryption method for those text files, those INI files that I showed you guys in the config folder. I did manage to find it. It's in common util security under crypt. Of course, that makes sense, you know. So we could technically edit this function because this is the specific one. Like I said, it is base64 encrypted. Um, the password hash is in here and it's base64. The salt key is here. Oh my god, you've got to be kidding. They made it that easy? Hold on. You know what? I'm actually going to record this. So you guys remember, the, maybe some of you guys wouldn't because a lot of you might not pay attention to my Minecraft videos. In a past video, somebody tried to advertise their Minecraft alt account service on my... Uh, on my YouTube comment section. So I ripped apart their um, their decoder and threw it in here, basically, and made a custom decoder and then showed off the source code. What I'm doing is I'm adding a salt key text box where I can put any key I want and a checkbox. If I want to dump the Minecraft account from that website, I check this box and it dumps it. If not, it'll do something else. So what we're going to do is if cbmc checked we do that. Else we take this entire thing of code put it here but this is equal to text salt key dot text and boom goes the dynamite because oh this does SHA-256 so what I have to do is change this to base64 I think uh, I'll try it as a SHA-256 because it has the key and we're gonna basically I'm going to back up the original and we're going to build this one. So this should work theoretically. But if this doesn't work, what I can do is simply take their key and their algorithm here and just do the same thing I did. Take this function and recreate it and put it out to a text box instead or export it as a new text file. It's that simple. It's really stupid. So. We have it here, and what we're going to do is take text from here, say this one, put that there, and salt key is here. That's so stupid. Decrypt. Let's do it from in here, because this will debug it. Do, 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 do. And then we do this. It's going to yell at me about something. Okay, so it's because of the way that this works. It's a different cipher code. So we would have to create a different function to do this. But that's not a big deal. So what I can do instead is take the code from here. Back. I simply copy all this. I know this sounds stupid. Hear me out. We'll do public void. I know it doesn't have to be. And we just paste this in here. And then anything that's got red underneath it, we're going to do text. Uh, let me make sure. Hold on. 
This is text account info. Okay, so that's what will go there. And then crypt.password hash is right here. Oh my god, it's just password like that. These guys are idiots. <laughs> String password hash equals da 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 done. And then salt key is going to be oop, sorry. Salt key will be string salt key equals and we're just going to hard code it for testing purposes because it's just easier to do it that way. Da, 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 done. So that takes care of those errors. Now we have to change the return. Um, so the return here is kind of pointless. What we can basically do is we can look at this and see what the string is, the encoding string, and try to instead put it out to the text box. So vi key is right here. Okay, at least that key is something difficult. Thank God. And we get rid of this. So pretty much all the errors are taken out and everything should decrypt now. So now it goes into this. And instead of having the return here, we just do text uh, account decrypt dot text equals encoding utf8 dot get string. Actually, we can probably just copy and paste this. And it should output whatever we want from that text box. So let's try it. Oh, hold on. <laughs> Duh. I got to tell it to do it. CF decrypt. And this is how we decrypt these files. Oh my god, it fucking worked. Look at that. We have decrypted files. So this converts to this. You've got to be fucking shitting me. <laughs> I know I haven't been swearing as much in my videos, but like I'm excited right now. Because it's been a long time since I've actually cracked files like that. Um, so what we're going to do is service config decrypted. And we'll put it in there. And we're going to do everything. We're going to do broker.ini. So broker config encrypted. Oh my god, it's so easy. Bundle config. Bundle config decrypted. <laughs> this is so dumb. Why did they make it so easy? Default server. There's the default server. I wonder what happens if we change that. Gateway config. Oops. Way config decrypted. And finally, publisher config, which is the longest string, of course. I wonder if there's any other files in here that I can decrypt this way. Publisher config decrypted. 
Hippopotamus. Hippopotamus? What for? Whatever. Okay. <laughs> that was way too easy. Okay, that's really cool. I'm kind of proud of myself on this one. Um, I don't think there's probably going to be anything else that I can decrypt for that. But that just shows you how powerful it is to use DN Spy with new games. Um, and give me one second. Sorry. So, anyway, sorry, somebody posted something and was asking me a question. I did realize that their website shoots back similar... Okay, so it's not the same. Similar stuff, and obviously that didn't work. But, that's how easy it is to make a decryptor when you have, you know, the source code right in front of you. Um, and it's definitely really awesome that I, I'm personally proud of myself for being able to do that. So uh, I'm going to probably throw this decryption, decryption stuff into the CF downloader on top of it. Uh, I'll put it at the top here. We'll do um, in a similar fashion, basically. We'll do decrypt config, and I'll add it to this as well, and I'll probably be releasing this tool. So keep your eyes open for that. I'll at least open source it somewhere, like uh, the Lith Archive, um, whatchamacallit. And we'll go from there. But... Maybe in the next video, I'll go over some gameplay, if I can get gameplay to work. I haven't tried the game yet, because I haven't played on a VPN. But if this is how easy this game's going to be, they're going to have a nightmare with cheaters. I It's... It's really dumb. Like, let's go over... Before I end this, we'll look at a couple bundles here. We'll look at Axe, because... This one seemed to have some of the biggest stuff in it. So we'll go scene and we'll open up the axe mod and we'll go asset explorer for this. So we need file, load file. Uh, last thing I was doing was racing rivals. Holy crap, that was a long time ago. And we'll do the biggest file. It's going to take a second to load for sure because it's the biggest file. So I'm going to pause this while it loads and I'll come back. All right, the file finally loaded. Let's take a look at what we got here. So we're going to go by size here, largest size first. And it's a text file. <laughs> it's a shader. <laughs> so here's the rocks, it looks like. These are... Just like visuals for the map, it looks like. And then this is a little training ground, I guess. Weird that I can't scroll in any closer. More foliage and stuff. More foliage and stuff. Er, these look like obstacle course pieces, you know? Since I haven't played the game yet, I can't say. More rocks. More rocks. You need some rocks, because I got some rocks. Jesus Christ. I'm gonna get my rocks off looking at these rocks. Hey yo! <laughs> oh, that was dumb. Wow, actually, this is a really big area. Nice. Yeah, this looks really cool to put back together. Huh. Whoa. Okay, so there's a dam. So I'm... That's the water. That's gross. So this is the top of the dam. All the small stuff. Another building. Cool. Yeah, so, I mean, it looks like the game's a lot of fun. And vehicles? Audio. Let's... You're not missing anything. It's just water. So there's vehicles. I don't know if they're drivable. Wind. Here's another building that's pretty cool. Top of the building. 
I'm trying to see if there actually are vehicles or anything. This is all text and mesh. Yeah, I don't know if there's like a vehicle thing. Oh, good lord, there's trees. Cool. And cliffs. Oh, cool. I like cliffs. Doors, man. Doors. I want to find out if there's actual drivable vehicles without having to play the game. Oh, I feel like there definitely are, actually. Yep. I don't know if these are drivable, but they're definitely big vehicles that we can rip from here and use in any other project on the planet. So, pretty cool stuff. Um, anyway, I'm going to cut off the video here because I got some cleaning to do before friends show up at 1 o'clock. And I was not planning on wasting half an hour making a video. <laughs> if you are interested in the download links, they will be on my Discord in the supported leaks section. I will also be putting them up on Lith Archive. And I'll definitely be making more videos on this game. I'm sure of it. So it looks like the game's probably only been in production for about two years, judging by what version of Unity they're using. And... It looks like it's going to be a very easy game to manipulate and maybe even do some real custom stuff with. I would bet you we can make a private server out of this. I know I throw that word around a lot, but I'm going to get the CF0 tool working. I'm going to talk to my friend Octowolf, who knows a lot about this stuff, and the other guys that are working on the private server for Combat Arms. And I'll see what we can do. So I'll talk to you guys later. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Peace out. Oh, I usually ask a question at the end of the video. Hmm. Should I chalkboard paint the black golf? Leave me your, leave me your thoughts. Probably just the hood. But should I do it? Peace out, guys.